Hello, I'm James Mayhew and I'm the illustrator of Nen and the Lonely Fisherman. Hello, welcome to my studio, which is actually a little attic room at the top of my house. Now this is where I make all the illustrations for my books and I've been making books for children for over 30 years. The very first book I ever made was all about a little girl called Katie who discovered magical paintings that she could climb inside and it was called Katie's Picture Show. There's now a whole series of books about Katie like Katie and the Sunflowers and Katie and the Water Lily Pond and alongside these books I've also done some stories about a little ballerina called Ella Bella. But as well as writing and illustrating books, I also really enjoy working with other writers. And so I've been collaborating on books like this one by Joyce Dunbar called Mouse and Mole and Gaspar the Fox by Zeb Sones. And this book called Mrs Noah's Pockets by Jackie Morris. It's lovely reading other people's stories and imagining how you might create pictures to go with them. So when Ian Eagleton sent me his story, Nen and the Lonely Fisherman. I was very excited. I knew at once that I really wanted to illustrate this story. The story is all about a merman called Nen who lives in a sunken city at the bottom of the sea. But sometimes he swims up to the surface and one night he meets a lonely fisherman called Ernest. After many adventures they fall in love and of course live happily ever after. Now whenever I start working on a book I always begin in a sketchbook like this one and I'm very fortunate because I live quite near the sea so I went to a little village called Walberswick and did some sketching. Walberswick is a beautiful little English fishing village on the east coast in Suffolk and it's still an active fishing village. If you get to visit, you'll be able to see little boats going along the River Blythe that leads out to the sea. I really like these little wooden houses that you find in Bulberswick. They were once smoke houses where fish were smoked ready for eating. I thought they'd be perfect for some of the buildings in the town where Ernest lives. So I decided to do some sketching of them. I love to go out sketching and drawing things from real life and it's so useful when you're trying to plan an illustration for a book. Lots of the buildings that I saw and sketched ended up in the final illustrations in the story of Nen and the Lonely Fisherman. The great thing about visiting the seaside is you never really know what you're going to find until you get there. Let's take a look inside the sketchbook. When you're planning a book it's good fun to experiment and find different ways of making pictures. Not all the pictures that I drew in this sketchbook ended up inside the finished story. And sometimes things go a bit wrong and I have to draw them again and again and again. I like to try lots of different things to make the pictures with. Like the coloured pencils that I've used in these drawings. I also have to plan the pages carefully and decide exactly what I'm going to show on each page. This is for a big storm in the book. And this was an early idea for the front cover. But instead it ended up for an illustration inside the book. So now I'm going to show you how I make one of the illustrations for the book. 
we're going to be making a wild stormy sea with a, a merman, just like Nen, swimming in the water. I don't work digitally, none of my work is done on computer, so all of my illustrations are done with real paints. I'm going to be using just an ordinary piece of old cardboard, which is great recycling. And I'm going to be painting on top with these emulsion paints, which I've also recycled because lots of people just throw these little pots of paint away. They're called match pots or sample pots, and they've got the paint inside them that you use to paint the walls of your house with. And I'm going to mix them up on my palette here. And they're really, really great paint for using at home. But you do have to be careful not to get the paint on your clothes because it's quite difficult to wash it out. So make sure you have a grown up to help you. So I'm going to mix this blue and sort of a turquoisey green jadey colour together and I'm going to add a little bit of white so it doesn't end up too dark. So those are the main colours I'm going to be using. I'm just going to begin like this. Big bold brush marks on the paper or cardboard. You don't have to be careful at all. You can just be as free as you want because the colours straight away suggest water and the sea. It doesn't take long to make the picture look like a stormy sea. You don't have to use the same kind of paints that I'm using. You can use any paints that you have at home. They'll do just as well. I'm going to need a bit of white here to look like sea foam. Waves crashing. And now I'm going to get some other colours ready because I'm going to start painting my merman. And I'll be using gold and brown colours to look a bit like Nen in the book. So the tail is sort of like a curved triangle kind of shape. And then of course there are the fins on the end of the tail. which are almost like leaf shapes. Now I'm going to get a brown colour for Nen's skin. So that's the top of his body. Needs to be an arm down here and another arm over there. I'll just blend the body to the tail a little and that's looking okay. Time for the neck and then his head, which to begin with now is just going to be the shape, a sort of oval or circle. And a little bit more there because he has his hair in a bun. And also I just want to add some hands, just a little shape here. So I'm not putting any detail on with the paint. That will all come later in pencil when the paint has dried. So now we're going to leave this to dry for about half an hour. Now it's dry, I'm going to draw on top with these coloured pencils. They're just ordinary colouring pencils. Once the paint is dry, it's a great surface to draw on. So I'm going to start with Nen's head. I'm just going to show the shape of the face and then start with his hair. He's got nice black curly hair. So lots and lots of that around the side of his face and on top and of course the bun that he has. I'm just going to show where the neck goes and the shoulders. But most importantly I'm going to start doing his face. I always begin with the eyebrow and the nose, like that. That helps me remember where the eyes need to go. There's his mouth. He's smiling, he's happy. And there are his eyes. Now, Nen has a few whiskers in the story, so I'll just add those. Some hair growing on his face, like that. But with a bigger eye. So there's Nen's face. And now I'm going to start drawing the rest of the body. I think I'm going to use a different colour. This blue is very nice. There are his fingers on one hand. 
because we've got the shape suggested in the paint, we don't have to do too much drawing. It doesn't matter if the paint is a bit wobbly. It doesn't matter if the drawing and the shape of the paint don't match exactly. Side of his body, like that. And now I need to remember that Nen wears a little, a little necklace that he gives in the story to someone very special. This is the side of his tail. This just helps the shape show up a little bit more against the wild sea. And now the shape of the fin. It's really not too difficult at all, this technique. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of green, suggest some scales. Perhaps some blue scales as well. Now to make the tail look really special, I'm going to use some more paint now. I'm going to use a very bright yellow and I'm going to paint some little circles and shapes to look like sparkling scales on Nen's tail, like this. Already that looks a little bit more magical and special, doesn't it? And something that helps make it look good is using more than one colour. So I'm not just going to use bright yellow, I'm also going to use some white in a minute. A couple more blobs here and there first. That's it. Okay, I think that will do. And now I'm going to get my white paint. And that should make it look even more sparkly. Because we want the, the scales and the tail to look nice and glittery. Here they are. I think that really helps it look shiny. And a few little dashes up here. And perhaps on the shell, the necklace round his neck. Yeah, that shows him a bit better. Perhaps some highlights on the tail as well to make that look really golden. OK, so now I'm going to have a bit of fun, actually. I'm going to mix some of the white paint I've been using with some water to make it a little bit runnier. Can you see in that lid of the paint pot? Now I'm just going to hit the paintbrush, ping, 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 like this, and cover the sea with sea spray. That looks a bit more dramatic and stormy and exciting, doesn't it? Of course you have to be careful not to make a terrible mess doing this, but it's really good fun. And there's some big splashes and spray coming from Nen's tail as he flips it about in the water. So that gives you a quick idea of how I make one of the illustrations for Nen and the Lonely Fisherman. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you all have lots of fun making your pictures of characters, creatures and people who live at the bottom of the sea. Maybe you can draw some sea monsters or perhaps even a sunken city for the merfolk to live in. Take care, have fun, keep on reading, keep on drawing and like Nen and the fishermen, always be kind.